Hello YouTube, I'm MFG Productions, and welcome back to another video. Now I'm just gonna come right out and say this, this video is sponsored by ReWorld. However, this is not an advertisement for ReWorld in the traditional sense. This video is a tutorial to help new users who are using ReWorld for the first time learn how to navigate and start building simple games in the ReWorld engine. Now I would not be making this video if it was just a regular old YouTube game advertisement. I genuinely see a lot of potential in ReWorld, and I think that a tutorial video for this game is a great way for ReWorld to help their new users start making games on their platform. Now what is ReWorld you might ask? ReWorld is a new free online medium where people can easily create 3D games and share them with the online community. Right now ReWorld can be found on the PC and on the Google Play Store. Now on the ReWorld website they offer two separate applications. One is known as the ReWorld Game Engine where you can of course build and create games. That's what our tutorial is going to be about today. I'm going to show you guys how to create simple games in the ReWorld Engine. And the other is the ReWorld player, which of course you can use to play ReWorld games from the ReWorld website. So without further ado, let's get into our ReWorld tutorial. I'm going to show you guys around the ReWorld game engine and how to make a simple ReWorld game. So when you first load into the ReWorld engine, of course where you make ReWorld games, you'll be presented with this window right here. It says new at the top. This is obviously where you make new games. They have a couple of empty templates of just, you know, straight grass and the village, west, track. So if your game already fits one of these different uh, pre-made maps, then you can certainly pick one of these to build your game in. And up here at the top they have different sortings, so we have scenes, and then of course games. And if you click down here to my games, you can see all the games that you have uploaded, local games you've been working on, auto-saved games, and recycled games or projects. So I'm just going to start here with terrain empty template. Click confirm at the bottom to select that one. And if this is your first time loading up the ReWorld engine, you'll be presented with this engine interface guide, which for software where like this is actually really helpful. So I'm actually going to walk through this guide because I think it's actually really good, but I'm going to do some extra explaining along with it. So it says, let's get familiar with the key features in different areas in the ReWorld engine interface. On the side here, we have the main menu, of course. Going through the items, we have my games here, where you can, of course, click and see all the games that you've made. You can make a new game here. And these, by the way, are obviously shortcuts to uh, do stuff like this. Change the file location. Control S, classically save. We have save Save as, control shift S, project upload, obviously where you upload your project, publish, this is where you publish your game to the ReWorld online medium where you know you can play everyone else's published ReWorld games. Import resources is where you can import audio, images, models, or media into your ReWorld game or project that doesn't necessarily come with ReWorld itself. So if you had a custom skin for a model or you wanted to make a custom sound that you recorded yourself and put it in the game, this is where you would do that. Then we have edit mode view mode, test mode, and settings, and then of course help. So this toolbar on the top is very important, sort of your main hub here for tools. On the side, what they call the hamburger menu is where you access all of the main things like saving. So moving through the toolbar here, we have a rotate checkbox and a move checkbox. As it says here, these will help you line up objects at specific angles and distances, basically letting you sort of magnetically snap objects together to get them in the right position. And these two settings here are how aggressive those settings might be. So when you know with a lower setting, there'll be more snaps and a higher setting, there'll be less. This allows you to sort of select and click on things. This lets you move different objects around in the ReWorld engine. This lets you rotate objects and this lets you change the size of ReWorld objects. Check marking collisions here determine the global collision detection among objects in constraints determines the constraint relationship while moving objects. So this one up here, they call Boolean operations. This right here will allow you to take two objects in your reworld scene and combine them together as one object. This one right here allows you to delete an object that is combined with another object. And this one allows you to split two combined objects apart. So this one's pretty simple right here. This one allows you to create new objects or parts. This one allows you to change their material. Material. This one allows you to change their color. So these tools right here are for grouping and constraints. Don't get these confused with the Boolean operations. These are different. When you group objects up, they can still be separate, but when you select them, they will be grouped in the same selection. So obviously this one allows you to group parts. This is ungrouping, and this changes the control constraints between parts. Up here, this is an obvious button. This allows you to run the game. 
you will spawn in the default location for the game. And if you click this down arrow right here, you can start the game in place so you can fix things while they are happening. This gray box over here to the left are known as function tabs, and they provide short access to the workspace manager, terrains, resources, animations, and the store right here. So essentially what the store is, is that it is an open market where people can make different creatures in games, different weapons, vehicles, whatever it might be for their separate games, and upload them to the store where you can either buy them or they'll be free to download. And of course you can upload stuff to the shop if you make something. This is terrain tools right here. This is making a new folder. So this viewport in the center here very obviously is the main area in the engine. And you can use WASD, E, and Q to move around and interact in the viewport. Very simple with that one. This right here is the work bar. This is essentially where you manage all of your resources that are located in your game. As you can see when you open a terrain template, it already has some right here that are generally made for you. Right over here to the right is the properties panel. So this panel to the right directly interacts with this panel to the left. So as you can see right here, game setting is selected. So right here is actually actually the properties of game setting. So if I wanted to change my game settings, I would click on here and then go over here and change whatever game settings I want. So this right side properties panel is essentially an opening of this left panel. And not to get this too confused, if you also click on an object in your game here, it will also show up on the side here in the properties panel. Right up here is the community section. This allows you to see news from the official channel. And that is the entire UI tutorial for ReWorld. Now I'm just going to do a quick display of how to actually use some of these settings that we just talked about. I can't go through all of them because that would take way too long, but I'll go through a couple of them. And in case you guys ever forget what any of these different tools are, if you highlight over them, as you can see, it shows you what that actually is with a description that says part, create a part. So we're just going to create a part here. As you can see, it's freely sliding around right now, but if we use the rotate and the move ones, you can see now it is sort of snapping around my scene here. And as stated earlier, WASD to move around and look at stuff. And of course, I'm using the select tool to select and move around this object. This is the spawner right here. This is where your character will spawn in. I can move this around if I want to as well. If you notice with this tab on the right here, it changes when I click through these two separate objects and you can see here on this workspace this is known as part in the workspace and this is known as spawn in the workspace so this one changes to and they all correlate with each other. If I wanted to select this object in here, I would just click part and it gets selected. As you can see, I'm going to use this tool right here known as the material tool. I'm going to change this to, and I want to make it a little bit bigger, basically just a big ice pad. So I'm going to go over here to the scale tool and I'm going to drag it to increase the scale and size of this cube object here. All right, now I'm going to go back into select. Now I'm going to go back up here and change the color just to make it like a little bit of a nice color. All right, turns out I made a small error there. So for some reason there, when I clicked ice, it didn't make it into ice, but now it's ice. And we can go up here and click the play button. It will load in and you will be brought into the world playing the game as your character here. And I gotta say the graphics honestly are really nice for a game engine like this. And as you can see, if we go over here, this looks so much like a skating rink. You can see the texture looks just like ice and it is blue like ice. But how can we make this behave like ice? It's a little bit tricky. Now you actually can set custom physics parameters for objects like this. As you can see, I've anchored it, which means it can't move anywhere. But as you can see, you can set angular velocity, velocity, and custom physics down here for friction and bounciness. But this is for the object itself, so the player won't, you know, adhere to these because the player has its own friction and density and stuff like that. But what we can do is make a separate ice block that slides along this one. So that's super easy for us to make here. I'm just going to hit control C to copy this object that I have selected and then control V to duplicate it. I'm going to resize this object to make it a little bit smaller into, you know, a regular sized cube, you know, a brick of ice just like this right here. Now in my settings here, if I go down to this piece of ice and change its friction all the way down 0.0 0001 for example, that's almost no friction. And we'll give it zero bounciness because ice doesn't really bounce. And if I go over here and make sure that this item adheres to gravity, so this is selected and then is not anchored so it won't stay in place. And then if I hit the play button now, this ice should slide around. Yes, as you can see, it's actually moving faster than us right now. Can we catch up to the ice plug? Oh, 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 oh God, it's still moving. It's still moving. It's going to go right off the map. 
Well, yeah, as you can see, it's a very slippery and slidey ice block there. So yeah, we've made some uh, pretty realistic ice physics here. That's usually how I like to start making games in something like this is I, you know, mess around with a couple of different uh, stuff that the game can do. And then I see if I can turn this into a game. So as you can see, I've zoomed way out here on the map. I'm going to take our uh, ice here that we had before. and I'm going to basically make the entire ground this piece of ice, just like so. So essentially, uh, you know, you'll always be walking around on ice and the spawn here is right on the ice. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna change my ice block color I think here. There's something a little darker so it's easier to see here. So yeah, that's a nice like icy color I'll raise it above the ground here I'm gonna go into its dimensions and I'm gonna set all these dimensions to the same size So it's a perfect cube because I think I want a perfect cube for this I'm also gonna take our spawn thing here completely transparent or almost completely transparent here you know, I could shove it under the ground there. Now you can't even see it. So you can't even see the spawn. And now let's see if I've made, you know, a nice ice skating rink. Because I have an idea here for a, you know, a, kind of a unique game. All right, if I spawn, here I am on the ice. And let's see if I hit my thing here. Yep, it is moving as expected. I've basically made a big sheet of ice. All right, now I think this thing slides a little too much. So I'm going to give it a little bit more friction here. All right, that's a little bit better. That's, that's pretty good. All right, I think I'm going to go here and increase its density a little bit. Oh, that's nice. That's like a nice heavy ice brick right there. I think for my game here, I'm also going to want to increase my player speed because it's a little cumbersome to walk. So I'm going to go into starter players here and then go into platform avatar. Then on the settings, I can change a bunch of player settings. You can change move speed and jump speed and stuff. I'm going to give a little bit more movement speed. I'm going to give almost two times, but not exactly two times the movement speed. So if I play the game here, let's test that out. All right, that is definitely a lot more speed. Maybe we don't need that much more speed. Yeah, that's nice. That's a pretty good movement speed. All right, and if I hit this ice around here, you can see, yeah, that's pretty good. But we also have this problem where my ice block just sort of slides uh, slides off the world there. So for my ice rink here, I think what I'm going to do is build some walls for this ice rink because we don't really want that ice to be falling out everywhere. I think for the side walls, we'll probably want to do something. We'll do some old ceramic tile. I think that'll look good and we'll change the color up here. Probably want something like, yeah, that's a nice uh, sort of tile color. And we will build some beautiful ceramic walls here for our rink. So I now have two walls here. I'm going to hit control V again to duplicate that again. I'm building some walls the other way. And what I'm also going to do over here is I want to put some nets on either side because basically what I want to do is make some sort of, you know, ice football type of thing or ice soccer, depending on where you live. America's soccer, other countries, it will be football. Two or more players here. And one sort of ball or ice cube because it's sort of an ice theme here. And they all have to, you know, play some ice soccer or football to get it on their side. So what we will do right now is maybe there is already a net that is pre-built by someone else or by the reworld developers for us to plop right into our game and use. If I click on the shop in the side here, of course, you can see all these different items and things that people have built. I can look for a net up here by just searching for it. See, uh, there's cabinets and stuff, but I don't see any actual nets. Ooh, these wire fences look pretty nice. I could probably build a net out of these wire fences. We will go with that just as a demonstration of the shop here. I can just click it right here. As you can see, the price is free. I buy over in the corner, it says purchased. Now I click the shop again to exit out of it. Now I click the material box over here. This brings up all of the materials that I have downloaded and saved. You get a bunch of pre-selected ones, but I have to go up here and search fence, I think it was. Fence, and yeah, here it is, wire fence. Now, as you can see, it is directly in my world for me to uh, mess around and play with. I'm gonna move it in here. That's sort of a nice net or goal. Now what I want to do is combine all these objects together. So what I'm gonna do is make sure I'm on the select tool, hold down control, select multiple at once. I'm going to make sure they're nice and anchored. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to group these objects together. So they sort of combine into one object that I can move around, which as you can see is known as model up here. And it contains three wire fences over on the side. I will rename this goal, control C, control V and copy it and bring this goal all the way to the other side of the map. Like so go over here, flip it around. And there you go. I have made two separate goal posts. So now when I play my game here, okay, that is not what I wanted to happen. Sometimes the things happen when you build games. I'm going to select all of these walls, make sure they're anchored without gravity because they don't need that. There we go. If I play the game again, that should fix it. Yep, there we go. 
So as you can see, we have our ice cube over here, and you could be in this game with all of your separate friends. Run around and push each other out of the way, trying to get this ice cube inside the goals. Yeah, there we go. It goes right into the goal. Hey, we scored. <laughs> of course, we could build a scoreboard and other things like that. But just for the simple video, this is what I've built so far. And it's kind of cool. So if I wanted to upload this game to the reworld servers so everyone else can join and play it with their friends. Well, first I'd want to make sure I save my game. I'll name this Ice Soccer here. I have saved my project and once I've hit publish, I can click the new button here. Now I can do my basic settings here. You know, just give it a nice simple description. We can do a couple of tags here. Probably do something classic, casual one. And if I had to give it a theme, it would be a sports theme. We go to public settings here. You know, we can make it private, but I want to make it public so everyone else can play it. We'll publish this to PC and mobile. Again, this does actually have a mobile release on Android. And for a thumbnail, we do need an icon. All right, so I'm going to use this royalty-free ice cube image here. And here's where I can upload an image of my game here. So I just took a quick snapshot there and I'll click confirm. And then I will click confirm again. It says I have sensitive content in my description. I think one of these words uh, doesn't meet the requirements here. Maybe it's ball. I'll just remove this part of my description and then I hit confirm. All right, it was that word. All right, it has been successfully published now. If I hit confirm, you can see in my games, Ice Soccer is listed here, which is super cool. Now, if I go into the ReWorld website here, I can see latest release. Here is mine. It says Ice Soccer right here with the big ice cube. That's cool. Again, this is a royalty-free image, which means I can use it for something like this. It does not have any copyright on it. I would like to stress that you can't just use any random image. If I hit play and I open the ReWorld launcher here through my browser, you can see now I've loaded in and I can play this game. So yeah, this was uh, super cool. I think ReWorld has a ton of potential as a game and a game maker. I think it's really simple to use. I think the tools that they have are really good. Of course, there's going to be updates and bug fixes as things continue, but I think that the community especially has a lot of potential and I wouldn't have made this video if I didn't think that. So anyways, thank you everyone for watching. I'm Matt Productions and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.